My evaporator is leaking Freon? Where? Hi, my name is Ray with Austin Air Company. Today's topic is going to be evaporator coils. It's leaking Freon. How could that be? How could that be? The house is either new, the house may be a few years old. How could that be? So basically, uh, what, we, what we've done is, is I've uh, got a warranty coil from a customer, uh, and I don't divulge you know, my customer's name, so I'm just going to refer to this customer as Mr. and Mrs. J. Uh, this coil was uh, probably somewhere around eight, eight and a half years old. Uh, fortunately, the manufacturer is covering this coil f with a 10-year parts warranty. Now, warranty is thrown around quite a bit, and just because uh, the equipment's under warranty doesn't mean it's not going to cost you anything. You know, there's labor, there's refrigerant, there's uh, modifications to the system in order to do the job. So, you know, and it depends on a whole host of various factors as to what that cost is going to be. One thing that you have to realize is that when the Freon leaks out of the pool, it's not necessarily visible. Uh, you know, you're going to go up there and you're going to say, oh man, well, I took the panel off. I don't see any Freon leaking out anywhere. I just had a recharge. I don't see any Freon leaking out anywhere. Typically, you know, the atmospheric changes will convert that gas from a liquid into a vapor. And basically, you know, there's a lot of times where the leak is so small, pinhole leaks, that it evaporates before it can fully uh, be relieved from the unit. That's not always the case. You know, sometimes, you know, if a system uh, blows its charge instantaneously you get a puff of you know vapor uh, within that envelope of the unit and you'll say oh wow well there something happened but it's gone now well it's because that you know once that refrigerant hits our atmosphere it evaporates so basically what I've done is I've taken this uh, this coil uh, mr. and mrs. J and uh, I've uh, sealed the the part that connects to their line set and then I've done uh, what's called a leak sniff, uh, or leak search, whatever you want to call it. Now, uh, one thing to realize is that, you know, people get caught up in costs, what it's going to cost to do a warranty this, a warranty that. Just realize that a lot of times, you know, you know on a unit that I put in, uh, typically my warranty callbacks are typically 1%. 1% of all the pieces of equipment that I've sold and I've put in is 1% of my overall job. Now, the national average is typically anywhere from 25 to 35%. Now, once you start hitting that 35% of warranty calls, calling back, that company is going to be under duress. They're not going to survive under that type of duress. You know, if they got extended uh, warranty uh more and more warranty work where they're looking at non-billable hours, reduced rates, whatever, they're not going to survive under that. So, you know, just because you get a, one cheaper price here or one cheaper price there, you got to always remember service after the sale. There is no brand without problems. They all break. Don't fall, don't fall victim to a flashy little gimmick so always remember, service after the sale. Uh, that comes down to who you're using for service. You know, if they're not doing it right, nine times out of ten, a short time later, you're going to have issues. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, but we're going to go out to go out to the shop. I'm trying to keep this video as short and to the point as possible. Probably is going to be somewhere around 15 minutes long. So you know, but I think you'll you'll garner some uh, good information. Um, and potentially uh, put you in a better in a better spot because you now understand more of what's involved in order to take care of this problem. Thanks for watching. Okay, this is uh, what your evaporator coil looks like now. Basically, you know, there's no duct work attached to it or anything, and uh, the drain pan which was uh, connected to it is uh, has been disconnected. It's basically a horizontal. Uh, Horizontal or vertical application. Horizontal, the drain pan would fit on there like that. And uh, in this uh, particular coil, uh, was basically out of a new house. Uh, cut my customer, Mr. and Mrs. J, uh, lived there since the house was new. 
and uh, this this problem was actually discovered on a maintenance uh, inspection. What happened was, was this coil uh, started to leak refrigerant. I found it excessively low, and uh, because the uh, the unit was under a manufacturer warranty, you've got to replace it pretty quick because otherwise, once it falls out of that warranty, whether the leak was discovered prior doesn't matter. Once that warranty runs out, then you're basically left to uh, go back with either different coal, same coal, whatever, so on and so forth. So uh, basically what I'm going to show is, is, you know, leaks can be, can affect the coal in two different ways. It could be a water leak, maybe the drain pan, uh, you know, in this instance, you know, the drain pan's plastic, sometimes they can crack. And, uh, and so that would be another reason why you'd replace the coil is that there's a condensate leak. Now, typically, uh, typically you're going to replace a coil because it's leaking refrigerant. Right here is the, the suction line of the, of the AC system. The suction line basically goes all the way back to the compressor through what's called a line set. It's basically nothing more than a, than a copper tube, typically maybe either this size or maybe a little bit larger, depending on the efficiency of the unit. And it runs back to the compressor, and the compressor just basically cycles that refrigerant back to the coil through what's called the liquid line. Now, that liquid line is basically high-pressure liquid. So if you cut into that, you, you run the risk of, you know, and the system is charged, you run the risk of uh, frostbite, you know, uh, it, if it gets in your eyes, you're, you're looking at blindness. And so it's a very dangerous thing. It's not anything that you want to mess with uh, on your own. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to seal these off, and I'm going to put this coil under pressure, and I'm going to do a leak check to show you uh, what's involved in going through a refrigerant leak check. I typically don't pull my customers into the attic because there's always hazards up there. You could fall through a chase, you know, so on and so forth. So this video is basically designed to show you literally, you know, what I actually go through uh, in trying to find a leak. Uh, this one is likely going to be fairly easy because you know, I've already leak tested it, so I already know it's leaking pretty, pretty badly. Uh, but it's just basically to show you, you know, what I look at. And this particular coal is basically a builder's grade coal. Uh, it is copper, uh, copper with aluminum fins and steel, uh, steel side panels. Now, this particular uh, manufacturer basically went a step further and tin coated the uh, coil. Now, as you can see, there's like a silver type uh, covering on the uh, on the copper on the copper joints over on the opposite side now it really you know it doesn't matter I mean there's there's manufacturers that coat them with oil coat them with the special coating you know in the end you know if it's a copper aluminum fin and tube uh, coil it's gonna leak at some point I mean that's just the way the game is okay we've got the uh system under pressure and my meter's going crazy because I know this thing's leaking pretty bad and I'm in, inside the garage and then it's opened up so try to do this the best I can but basically when you hear it peg the meter like that that means there's a Freon leak. So you can see I'm pegging that meter and basically I, I the reason why I pull it away is because you know there's the opportunity for a fake leak you know, so on and so forth. So I do it multiple times to verify that the leak is there. Now, so you can see that it's just, it's leaking so bad, it's got, so, it's got more than one leak. Because I pull it away, let it go back to the beep, 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 and then it pegs the meter when I pull it in. That's detecting a leak. So, I mean, this thing's got more leaks than Swiss cheese. Uh, and you notice that you can't see anything. It's invisible to the naked eye. You're not going to be able to see it. And I've only got it on uh, about 100 pounds of uh, pressure. There's a test charge in there that, I mean, it's just leaking like crazy. So, you know, and you know, like I said, you know, this particular coal was tin-coated. 
on this back side but it really doesn't matter i mean they you know manufacturers have done everything they can do and uh that copper is just so paper thin small leak there usually i find you can find that's how you leak check uh, a coal and, and you know typically it's not always this easy you know and and then you know if you pick up a fake if you pick up a fake leak and you go and change the coal out under a fake leak and that wasn't the leak then you, you run into problems so you know experience uh, comes into play there that concludes my video segment series on my evaporator coal is leaking freon where is it leaking i hope you've enjoyed this little clip if you live in the Katy, Cypress, Richmond, Texas, and some surrounding areas, you can give me a call at 832-475-6895. Or, for more information, you can always visit me on my main website at www.austinairco.com. Thank you. Have a great day.